CBS News. This is Charles Osgood. It is not over yet. Shuttle Discovery will take off on a mission with international flavor. Christopher Glenn is with, on with us now from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Chris? Charles, the sun has finally put in its appearance, breaking over the top of a fog bank offshore from the Cape. Fears that that fog might cover the spaceport itself, however, have not materialized. The seven crew members all aboard, two are foreign guests. There's Frenchman Patrick Baudry, who had been scheduled aboard a March flight, which had scrubbed. And there's Saudi Prince Sultan Salman Al Saud, who will preside over the deployment of an Arab satellite, one of three nestled in the cargo bay. No major problems have cropped up during the countdown so far, which is due to conclude with the inferno of the launch, which is now less than a half hour away, Charles. Christopher Glenn, reporting live from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. From AP Network News, the launch of the Space Shuttle Discovery. Good morning to you. I'm Bob Moon, along with correspondent Dick Uliano at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. A little less than three minutes away now from the 18th Space Shuttle mission, the fifth launch of the Space Shuttle Discovery. It carries an international crew of five Americans, a French test pilot, and a Saudi Arabian prince. Dick Uliano standing by with one of the best seats in the house a few miles from launch pad 39A. Dick, any sense there that today's mission has been perhaps overshadowed by the attention being given the continuing hijack crisis in Beirut this morning? Well, Bob, it is a sad irony. Aboard the um, Discovery is a Saudi Arabian prince, Al Saud, and um, he hoped his flight today would improve relations between the U.S. and the Islamic world. He told reporters that last month. Of course, his flight, the first hour of in space, has been overshadowed by these untoward events in the Mideast. We are sitting in a trailer at a window looking out over a lagoon, and in the distance, the space shuttle Discovery stands on its tail, ready for launch. Now, isolated from ground-loading equipment. We are at uh, T-minus one minute, 44 minus seconds. One minute, 42 seconds, and counting. We're less than uh, a minute and uh, 40 seconds now away from liftoff of 51G and its international crew. That is the voice of launch control. We'll verify that the shuttle main engines are ready to start. That's Jim Ball. It is a pretty morning here, a little hazy. The sun is hanging to the right of the launch pad from where we're seated. This is to be a seven-day mission. T-minus one minute, 15 seconds. The uh, liquid hydrogen tank is now at flight pressure. Dick, any flaws leading up to this, uh, this launch so far? Uh, it has been flawless, Bob. No problems at all. There was a report lightning hit the launch pad last night. It caused no damage. We're at T-minus one minute and counting. All systems go. The sound suppression water system is now being armed. Pre lift off water will be released at T minus 16 seconds. At uh, T minus 48 seconds, solid rocket booster development flight instrumentation recorder has gone to the record mode. And the main propulsion system, liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen outboard fill valves, have been closed. The shuttle's main engine is off on an auto sequence start. T minus 31 seconds. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Discovery's four redundant computers have primary control of critical vehicle functions. T minus 21 seconds and counting. SOB engine nozzle profile is now underway. T minus 16 seconds. T minus 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, we have booster ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of Discovery, and the shuttle has cleared the tower. There are plumes of smoke that are just blanching out all around the shuttle, and it has cleared the tower. Flame emanating from the beneath it. Very, very bright flame on a solid rocket booster. Two million pounds of solid fuel. There it goes. Now from this takeoff. What a trailer is shaking. Feels like an earthquake. It leaves you a little awestruck. You still have sight of it. Out of the, the, the 
that is uh, completely uh, covered with, uh, with the smoke from that launch. Atmospheric compression. What a sight, Bob. We're going to wait along now for the uh, separation of those solid rocket boosters, those two long tanks that you see uh, on the side of the shuttle. Make sure that they separate safely. Throttling back up to uh, 104%. It'll be about uh, less than 30 seconds from now, I uh, presume. We will have a uh, separation of the solid rocket boosters. They spend their fuel, and uh, that's it for them. Uh, small little rocket motors separate them from the uh, the shuttle. And then, of course, they are recovered and reused again. What al always amazes me is the acceleration. It's already about 15 miles downrange. What amazed me was this trailer rumbling. <laughs> Quite an experience. We're watching the uh, long range yes, confirmation of uh, cameras now. Rocket booster separation on time. So there we have it, the confirmation of the uh, solid rocket boosters separating Roll from the spacecraft. The feet per second. And the space shuttle Discovery oh, is on its way for the fifth time, the 18th shuttle mission. During seven days in space, this crew will deploy three communication satellites and uh, plans to serve as a Star Wars laser target of sorts. Discovery is set to return to Earth a week from today, landing on the wide-open dry lake bed Discovery at Edwards Air Force Space, Space in California. And so the space shuttle Discovery on its way into orbit. Along with correspondent Dick Uligano at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, I'm Bob Moon, and this has been a live special report from AP Network News. Negotiations continue to end the Beirut hijack crisis. Space shuttle Discovery blast off with an international crew. Chile drops a state of siege. Good morning. This is Bill Lynch with the CBS World News Roundup. One, we have booster ignition and liftoff. Liftoff at Discovery. And the shuttle has a picture perfect liftoff this morning for shuttle Discovery, which was launched right on time at 7.33 Eastern on a week-long mission with an international crew to deliver four satellites and conduct a Star Wars experiment. This is Christopher Glenn at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Shuttle Discovery is in orbit now with a multinational crew of seven. The launch was performed right on schedule about a half hour ago, one of the smoothest of the 18 shuttle countdowns and liftoffs to date. Eight minutes later, main engine cutoff. Main engine cutoff is confirmed. And attainment of a preliminary orbit. Among the five Americans aboard is Shannon Lucid, the sixth American woman in space. Patrick Baudry of France is finally getting his shuttle ride, his original flight back in March was scrubbed and there's royalty aboard Saudi Arabian Prince Sultan Salman al Saud appropriately he'll be conducting experiments to see how oil and water mix in zero gravity and he'll watch as the Arab sat communication satellite is deployed as well as the new Telstar and the Mexican Morelos satellite the mission will last a week Christopher Glenn CBS News Kennedy Space Center Florida Hostages reported free in Beirut. The U.S. Naval Task Force arrives off Lebanon. Shuttle Discovery checks out a satellite glitch. Good morning. On this mission, later today, a ground-based laser generator in Hawaii will aim a beam of light at a small mirror in the shuttle window, a test of technology for the Star Wars missile defense system. The latest gloomy economic news has set the U.S. dollar lower on European currency markets, and in the usual seesaw reaction, the price of gold went up, fixed in London at $321.65 an ounce, an overnight gain of more than $2.5. President Reagan says no deals with the Beirut hijackers. The plane's pilot says a rescue would mean death for the hostages, another shuttle success. Good morning, this is Bill Lynch with the CBS World News Roundup. Continues a nearly flawless mission as this morning the crew successfully deployed a third satellite, an AT&T Telstar. Sounds to me like it's three up and three away. Sides retired. No, we're not ready for retirement quite yet, Bob, but uh, we're glad to be three for three. Later today, as Sandy Gilmore reports, the shuttle crew takes part in a test of Star Wars technology. NASA calls today's test high-precision tracking equipment. 
In it, the Air Force will send up a 4-watt laser beam from Maui, Hawaii. The laser will be reflected off a special 8-inch mirror back to the Air Force facility. NASA says it will test the ability of a laser to track a low-orbit object. Presumably, that would be an enemy missile or satellite. This is all what's known as Star Wars Defense, the Strategic Defense Initiative, or SDI. Some people lament seeing a civilian mission, such as this Discovery flight, being used to militarize the civilian side of the shuttle program. But NASA is being paid for the experiment, paid by the federal government's Strategic Defense Initiative organization, and NASA says it considers them a customer like anyone else. For its part, the Air Force has classified the nature of the test a secret. After the laser beam bounces back this afternoon, the Air Force will only announce whether it was a success. No details. Sandy Gilmore, CBS News, Johnson Space Center, Houston. Four U.S. Marines among 13 killed in a rebel raid in San Salvador's nightclub district. The hijack crisis in Beirut appears to be deadlocked. Good morning. This is Bill Lynch with the CBS World News Roundup. It's 7 o'clock. There's little movement as the hostage crisis enters a second week. El Salvador hunts for rebel killers of six Americans. Good morning. This is Bill Lynch with the CBS World News Roundup. Laser beam off the shuttle Discovery. Air Force scientists tried again this morning, and as Sandy Gilmore reports, this time the experiment worked. The shuttle Discovery begins its fifth day in orbit today. Just a while ago, Mission Control and the astronauts succeeded in getting the shuttle pointed in the right direction for a test of the Air Force's laser tracking system from Hawaii. Because wrong information had been put into the shuttle's computer the other day, the experiment failed. Today, everything worked. This was a demonstration of the ability to track objects in low orbit, namely enemy missiles, so-called Star Wars. At this point, Star Wars is a $28 billion program with no assurance that it could prevent the nuclear destruction of the United States anyway. But for its part, NASA has had a successful flight so far, launching satellites and launching a science platform now looking for a mysterious black hole in the Milky Way. Sandy Gilmore, CBS News, Johnson a half billion dollars for Star Wars research. The vote was 256 to 150. At 6.44 a.m. Eastern Time, summer officially began. Scheduled to land in the California desert about nine hours from now. It will have traveled nearly three million miles during its seven-day mission. It's been one of the most trouble-free of the 18 shuttle flights. The next flight will be a seven-day mission for the Challenger shuttle starting July 12th. Israel frees 31 Lebanese prisoners with no apparent impact on the American hijack hostages. A bomb is suspected in the crash of Air India's jumbo jet. Good morning, this is Bill Lynch with the CBS World News Roundup. Begun its re-entry burn for a return home this morning, its three-nation crew having chalked up a near-perfect mission. Sandy Gilmore reports from Houston. After seven days, after 111 orbits about the Earth, after nearly three million miles, seven astronauts will be home within the hour, landing at the desert runway in California. NASA is thrilled with this 18th shuttle mission. There were simply no problems. Astronauts sent out successfully three communication satellites, one each for Mexico, the Arab League, and for AT&T. Another satellite, later plucked back from space, measured X-rays in a so-called black hole. There was a light show as a laser beam from an Air Force facility in Hawaii tracked the shuttle an experiment in tracking enemy missiles. The stars of the show were two foreign astronauts aboard, Patrick Baudry of France and a prince from Saudi Arabia, Sultan Salman al Saud. They received widespread coverage in their homelands. The prince has become a hero in the Arab world. There were medical and other experiments, but things went so smoothly the crew members had time to conduct tours in English, French, and Arabic. They packed up so quickly, mission control gave them an extra hour's sleep during their last night. If it's beginning to seem routine, NASA officials say that's just fine. Sandy Gilmore, CBS News, Johnson Space Center, Houston. CBS News, this is Charles Osgood. Israel is about to end a near-perfect mission. Chris Fitzrandolph of CBS station KNX is at Edwards Air Force Base for the landing. 
The desert sky is light now, and NASA awaits Discovery's landing, the 12th time a shuttle has returned to Earth by way of the Mojave Desert. A crowd of several hundred spectators is waiting a whole parade of RVs parked in a neat row with the brave ones on the roof to get the best look possible. NASA did have to make a last-minute change of runway because of strong crosswinds, but that's not considered a problem anymore. Everything is go for a landing in just a few minutes, but everyone hopes will be a smooth ending to one of the smoothest missions yet. Christopher Randolph for CBS News, Edward Air Force Base, California. RNN News Time, 810. Special report from AP Network News, the landing of the space shuttle. Good morning to you, I'm Bob Moon, and the crew aboard the space shuttle Discovery is returning home, returning to Earth, and a royal welcome of sorts. Ten Saudi Arabian princes are to be on hand this morning in California's Mojave Desert. As Discovery touches down there, they'll be there to greet the crew members, one of whom is himself a Saudi prince. The AP's Dick Uliano has been following this flight from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, and Dick, it has been a successful flight. It's been one of the most successful flights that the space shuttle program had in 18 launches. We've got the correspondent. We've got correspondent Steve Futterman standing by in the uh, California's uh, Edwards Air Force Base now for a play-by-play uh, -play of what's happening as the shuttle comes in for a landing. Steve. So, Bob, the shuttle we can see from the high-powered camera supplied by NASA, the spacecraft is now over Edwards Air Force Base. As I think people have been reminded many times, this is a glider. It's powerless, so it must successfully land on its first try. It has only one try. It's now rapidly coming down as we see it approach. The shuttle appears first to the naked eye. It's just a white speck in the blue California sky. At least that's what it's like today. It grows larger and larger as it rapidly approaches. Approaches. And now the shuttle, we see it coming down rapidly. It's now coming down over the California desert. The clouds are really uh, out of the California sky today. They did have to move the landing to runway 23 because of some gusty winds, but so far that has not appeared to be a problem at all. And now we see the shuttle rapidly coming down. It's maybe 100 feet. The wheels are down. So now we're waiting for that critical touchdown. The rear wheels will touch first, and then gradually the front of the spacecraft will come down. We're waiting for the rear wheels to touch down. They have touched down. The shuttle sort of bounced a bit as it came down. The rear wheels did. And now the nose of the spacecraft gradually comes down. It is lowering now. And finally, we will get, in a few seconds, the touchdown. And now it has touched down. The spacecraft discovery successfully ending its fifth trip into space and the 18th trip of the space shuttle. Kicking up a cloud of dust on the floor of the California desert now as it uh, rolls to a stop. The support crews will now come out. This is a, a process that they've done, as I said, 17 times previous to this, mostly here at Edwards Air Force Base. The support crews will come, come out and purge the spacecraft. But this landing, like most of them, went very smoothly. As I said, the spacecraft appeared to bounce a bit as the rear wheels touched down, but except for that, it was a, a perfect landing by Commander Daniel Brandenstein and Pilot John Creighton. Brandenstein was on the eighth shuttle mission. For Creighton, it's his first flight. And indeed, the space shuttle has now rolled to a stop at Edwards Air Force Base in California. Briefly back to correspondent Dick Uliano at the Kennedy Space Center. Dick, uh, update us, if you will, on what uh, was accomplished during this mission. Of course, Bob. It, as I indicated earlier, it was one of the more successful flights in the space shuttle program. They deployed three communication satellites. They also put out and retrieved the Spartan Explorer, which measured X-ray emissions from the center of the Milky Way and also from a distant constellation. And this space shuttle mission participated in the uh, first successful Star Wars test. They acted as a target for a laser beam fired from Hawaii. Very successful mission. And the Space Shuttle Discovery is back on Earth safely. With correspondent Dick Uliano at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida and Steve Futterman at Edwards Air Force Base in California, I'm Bob Moon, and this has been a live special report from AP Network News.